All right, stocks in Russia, they fell today. The drop coming after more protests against Prime Minister Vladimir Putin's government and a decline in crude oil prices. That can, of course, create some opportunities, and this could be a good time, perhaps, to invest in Russian stocks. My guest, Scott Licamelli, he handles equity sales at Troika Dialogue USA. Scott, good to have you with us. Thank All right, you. let me just do the background here, sure. right? On Sunday, there is a vote in Russia for the Duma, the parliament. Correct. Vladimir Putin, who is currently the prime minister, Minister and has already said he wants to go back and be president of Russia. His party did not win as many votes as they previously had projected. And then, of course, there were a variety of protests. Tell me about the background of the Russian economy given this vote that took place on Sunday. Sure. Well, the Russian economy, ever since the last crisis, has been in, in a gradual state of, of uh, or actually a rather rapid state of recovery. Um, essentially, growth this year is quite strong at about 4.8 percent, probably will be about 4 percent next year. Inflation has reached a, a, a post-Soviet all-time low of approximately 6.2 percent this year. So we've seen a lot of great macroeconomic achievements in terms of, you know, on the policymaking side. Uh, and also, the, the country has adopted a more pragmatic approach to dealing with potential future crises by adopting a much more flexible exchange rate. So that's provided a very substantial uh, cushion, in addition to the half a trillion dollar war chest of foreign reserves that the country holds as uh, you know additional protective measure. All right, so, so inflation is down. Correct. Right? Growth is continuing apace. Is this all on the back of energy? Because when you think of Russia, you've got to think of all that oil and natural gas. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think one of the key challenges for the Russian economy is the uh, basically the diversity out of the extractive industries, particularly oil, gas, metals, and mining. Um, unfortunately, it, it still represents a substantial portion of GDP. However, uh, we've seen actually tax receipts in the non-extractive industries picking up this year, um, and we, we're actually starting to see uh, a natural diversification as the economy develops. All right, now, Russia wants to join the World Trade Organization, Correct. right? How's that application going, and what implications could that have for Russia as an investment? Right. Uh, I think it's, it's a very, very important step uh, in terms of Russia's uh, integration into the global economy. I think um, it's been going on, the negotiating process has been going on for 18 long years. And I think that. What are the sticking points? Well, the sticking points had been uh, that, in one sense, Russia hadn't wanted to. Previously, under the, the, the well, basically the Russian government did, did not have a strong desire. But I think uh, one of the issues was their lack of competitiveness, and they wanted to kind of create a more competitive domestic industries before they took the next step of opening up their economy further via WTO accession. Now that we're now that they feel that they're reaching that stage where they absolutely need the to increase investment, which would likely occur via FDI increased FDI flows into Russia should they join WTO. Uh, we, Foreign you know, direct investment, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. FDI, okay. We feel that'll be a very big step for them. It's going to open up competition. It's going to probably have a, a further downward, pre put further downward pressure on inflation because of greater price competition in the, in the domestic economy. So all around, it's going to be very positive for the Russian macroeconomic situation. So help us make some rubles. Help us make some dollars. I mean, what industry groups do you think are going to do well in the Russian stock exchange? Well, we like a, a number of names. I mean, we, we're very uh, interested and focused on uh, the our oil and gas team, like a number of names uh, in that sector. Uh, you know, you can look at Gazprom for a larger cap story. Um, although it is, it is perceived as somewhat of a of a potential value trap in that uh, the company. Um, basically understanding whether the company is going to be paying dividends is, is a serious issue. They just announced that they would be doubling their dividends, which is a, a positive step. But uh, that's one example of a very large liquid uh, stock that one could invest in. Um, uh, we're also very uh, positive on financials, but particularly one, which is Sparebank, uh, which is the largest financial institution in Russia. It's one of the most profitable uh, banks in the world with a 30 percent return on equity. Uh, and it is has very low leverage of about eight times versus 50 plus for the likes of UBS or Deutsche Bank. Uh, so very conservatively managed, uh, very high growth, uh, sustainable high net interest margins of over 6%. Uh, so basically, it's one of one of the best emerging markets banks. Unfortunately, because of Eurozone issues, um, they were Correlated. Dragged, correlated to Eurozone performance. Uh, yes, particularly in the financials, because a lot of the Western European banks who had exposure in Eastern Europe, uh, they're sort of an association with Sparebank, despite an entirely different risk profile. Uh, so they're much more stable uh, than obviously any of these banks. They have no exposure to eurozone debt. So they're, they're, it's a very good bank. High profitability, low risk, and very high growth. It's an underpenetrated banking system. Uh, if you look at like mortgage to GDP, mortgages to GDP are like three percent, which is minuscule compared People to people pay cash. 
Yeah, well, or just an undeveloped credit market. Right. Um, you know, retail loans as a percentage of GDP are also very, very low. So uh, we like that name quite a bit. We think that All that's right. Spurbank. You like Spurbank, and you like Absolutely. Gazprom right now. Oil Thank and gas and financial services. Thanks so much for giving right. us some perspective on what's going on in Russia and perhaps right. investing and maybe making a little money there. Thanks very much, Scott Licamelli, joining us from Troika Dialogue USA.